Welcome to part two. Let's tie up a spinnerbait. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of SDG, part two of our epic soup to nuts spinnerbait week. So hopefully you guys already saw the first video. If you didn't, you should go check it out because um, we actually modified a poison tail swim jig mold to be able to pour uh, spinnerbaits out of it. And then we poured a three quarter ounce head together we cut the sprue off and filed it down so it looked nice. Then we painted it together. Then we cured it in the oven, we pulled it out of the oven, we stuck some eyes on it, and we even sealed it up. So it is ready to go. I'm excited for part two as we put this guy on the vise and tie him up. We are shooting for a sprayed grass pattern. So the silicone, super simple. Uh, it's a little bit different than typical sprayed grass, right? It's Sprayed grass is almost a chartreuse, real light watermelon um, with purple. We definitely are going to do that, sort of, but I'm going to be using uh, a dark back as well, just because I like dark backs on most of my baits. Uh, so on the back, dark watermelon candy, that is half a tab. And then the main body, light watermelon candy. Of course, both of those have um, purple flake throughout. Then I've got half a tab of purple with, I believe, blue flake cut in half again. So this is a powerful color. It will overtake the spinnerbait if we're not careful. So half a tab cut again. So we're going to do a quarter tab and a quarter tab, which should give us a nice little blend. Uh, for the blades, since this is more of a brim pattern, right, uh, I'm going to go with two gold blades. So I don't, I don't need to remind you of the disclaimer, right? I know guys are passionate about their blade choice. So today, my blade choice is two willows, um, and both of them are going to be gold. So if you want to do it different, you go ahead, you feel free to, but I'm going with two uh, willow leaf gold blades, a four and a half on the back and a three and a half up front. Uh, I'll be tying with two tendonier flat wax nylon in olive, and we've got a wire form to contend with. So how the heck is that gonna happen? I suppose there's only one way to find out. Let's jump into the tie. Alrighty, here in the vise is our three quarter ounce head. We made this guy together. I'm gonna start by laying down a um, thread base here. As you can see, it gets a little interesting trying to tie on a vise um, with that wire form in the way. And what I have found in my, albeit uh, limited experience thus far, you just have to use a lot more thread. Uh, and when we do the collar, I have, I think I'm onto something for the collar. I've never seen anybody do it before. It works for me. I don't know if it's original. I'm not claiming that it is, but uh, I don't know. Maybe it'll be something that, that'll help you out. It seems to work, like I said, for me. We'll flip it up. First one we want, like I mentioned, we want that dark top. So we're gonna go with the dark watermelon candy on top. Definitely a challenge getting around the wire form, um, dealing with it, but I think you can, it's certainly worth it. You can make it work, right? So there we go. Just want that on the very top. Don't really want any on the sides. It's made to mimic the dark top of just about every brim that's out there, right? They have a darker top, the back, than they do the rest of their body. So from there, I'm gonna flip it over. And we're gonna put on that full tab of light watermelon. This is gonna go around the whole body. A couple light wraps just to make sure that we are in the right place. Measure it out as I usually do. Make sure they're kind of close. Yeah. All right, let's spread this guy around. Bring it up. 
You can overlap it here if you want. I'm actually going to just bring it right up to that green, not worry about overlapping it. The green as it flips over would cover it up, but I'd really like to have that nice, consistent, dark color all the way across the top without mixing the light in it too much. That looks pretty good to me. Quarter tab of purple. And I'm going to spread this out, right? So I'm going to put the first one on the bottom. I'm sorry, not on the bottom. On the side. One side. Because again, I don't want to go bottom and top because I really want that dark uh, watermelon to, to take over on top. So measure it out. Looks good. And we just push this around just a bit. Could have left it in one piece, but once you when you start stacking that silicone, it gets really unruly on how to get it to move around. And oftentimes, it's just easier to cut it in half and place it almost where it needs to be entirely, and then manipulate it as little as possible from there. So there we go. Last piece. Not a very complicated pattern here, right? Um, not a hard build from that perspective. What makes it a challenge is um, getting around, obviously, the wire form and, you know, picking your blade selection. What exactly are you looking for? But, man, that's half the fun, right? So many ways you can create a spinner bait. So many different actions you can get out of it blade types and size heads and angle of the of the wire form I mean really the sky's the limit on it so there we go I think that is that now I'm gonna bunch these up try to get them bound up here with some clips because I really want this stuff to stay tight on the head and on the collar as much as possible and we're gonna make this thread collar in a I don't know sort of a unique way so give it a couple of securing wraps there just to make sure So here's my thoughts on creating this head collar or this thread collar. Um, as I bring that thread around, I can't see what's happening on the back side. So as I, I can see right here, right? I can see if I'm getting in trouble, if I'm trapping silicone. Um, but once I move it and move it around, I got to move it back and then I can't see what's going on on the back side. Okay. So my thought was, why not use now granted this is this requires a rotary all you know for those of you that don't have a rotary you just have to kind of work through and go slow and build that thread collar just like you uh you want but for if, for those that do have a rot rotary and want to try this it's worked okay for me so i thought why not keep the thread in front of me in one place right kind of give me some extra room here and then just use the rotary so all I'm doing is moving it one little bit, just like that. And I can see around the entire um, collar where that thread is going. You see that? As it comes up to the thread, I just pause it for a second. Coming around. Again, I'm pulling out plenty of thread. Give myself plenty to work with. And I can see if there's any uh, silicone that did get a little trapped. I can see it through the threads. It gives me the opportunity to cover it up. I want to try to cover up all the exposed silicone, if at all possible. So, you just build it up, just like this, using the rotary. Alright, so there you go. I think we've got a nice clean thread collar all the way around, as far as I can tell. Um, now we got a whip finish and this is, I have to say, I don't know if there's a whip finish tool big enough out there 
to deal with that much of a wire form. So this is one of those rare instances where I really benefit from being able to do a whip finish by hand because I can spread my fingers out as far as I need to to get around that wire form. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Get lots of thread out, bring it in. I can go all the way up and around that wire form. Bring it down, flip my hand. See what I'm saying? I don't know that you can do that if there's a, a whip finish tool big enough to be able to do what I'm doing here with my hand. It just gives me a lot more versatility. So that's five of them. And that is that. So pretty successful, I think. Let's uh, cut the silicone here and then we will um, move on to the blades. Almost forgot, put the clips back in. We got to seal the threads. So my Loon water-based thread, um, or head cement rather, thread sealant. I wanted to call it thread cement. <laughs> There we go. Now we're ready for the blades. All right, so I moved the camera up a bit so you guys could see all of this. Hopefully you guys can see now all of that wire. So again, personal preference. I like the end of my top blade to be roughly around the end of the trailer, right? Somewhere in there. I don't want it way, way past. Um, so on these forms, this is a 0 0.40 wire form, half or oh, three quarter ounce head. I even use this 0.40 on a half ounce, and now you could go 3.5 or even lower for more action. Um, but I use the four, I like the four. So what I've done with this one, how it comes stock, I actually cut off about a half an inch, and that seems to get this four and a half, uh, or size four and a half blade right in the ballpark of what I'm looking for. So if I cut off, this isn't gonna be an exact science here, but about a half an inch, right? Somewhere close to that. Go ahead and do that. Okay. And then that's gonna get curved in, right? So it's gonna sit closer to there and you can see where the blade is and that's going to be that's what about an inch thereabouts past the bend of the hook and I would expect we'll put a uh, swim bait trailer on the back of this one four inch swim bait trailer it's going to have a head clear up here so that the tail should go just beyond this blade if I'm calculating things about right so that's what I like some guys like that blade to be uh, a lot further back, extended. There's various different arguments for all of those, right? Different shapes, different actions, but that's how we're going to build this one today. So we're going to do, um, in total, we've got, I put them back here so I don't lose them. I've got four metal gold beads. So we'll slide a gold bead on first. There we go. Next is the front blade. So got a three and a half gold willow leaf and a clevis. Um, I can't remember the size of this clevis. You have to check the descriptions for that. But the concave, that's the, that's the indent part, right? So the, the curve down should be down towards the head. So I'll put that through the clevis, right? So I got my curve going towards the head Slide that guy on. There we go. And then another bead. All right, so another gold bead there. And then I use these uh, clear beads. I like these clear plastic beads. Some guys use sleeves. I don't know. I just like the look of the beads myself. So two clear plastic beads. There we go. And then another um, gold or brass bead, just to break it up, give it a nice look. Two more plastic. 
And finally, one last gold bead. So there you go. So that is all set. Last thing to do is to put our main blade on. I'm using a split ring um, ball bearing swivel. So if, if you're going to cheap out, chintz out anywhere on a spinner bait, there's a lot of other places to do it. Don't chintz out on the swivel. All right. Get a good ball bearing swivel on the back. Um, something's nice and smooth. Make sure you got lots of good action from that back swivel. So and this is where I'm going to have to pop it out of the vise because I need to bend. I need to bend this in preparation. So I've got some wire bending pliers here. Grab it right there on the end. Line it up. Bend it around just like that. So that it just about closes. Yeah. Now we can slide that on. Of course, the, the split ring makes it really easy to put the, uh, the blade on. And since this is open, we don't need to worry about the split ring on the other end. But if you ever wanted to take it off, you wouldn't have to bend it out. So there we go, right? And now we'll finish it up. I actually get a different pair of pliers just to kind of finish this guy up. So put them on right before and bend it the rest of the way. I go a little bit beyond just so that when it relaxes, it's right up to the top. I don't want any gap there. And we can kind of tweak it, bend it back a bit and make sure that that wire is sitting as much as possible right underneath of the main wire. There we go. Oop. I see that? Sitting right underneath the main wire. Well, there she is. Our three quarter ounce soup to nuts modified poison tail swim jig mold spinnerbait. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. You kind of get a sense of where that blade's gonna be in relation to the soft plastic that is still to come. That's gonna be the third video this week. Uh, I'm gonna save the close-up shots and whatever we can do for a uh, test tank probably going to have to head to the lake if it's not blown out but i'm going to save that for the third video you guys can look forward to that but as a preview once again there she is i think it turned out really nice it's been a fun adventure so far this week i hope you guys are enjoying it and i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did and you want to see more jig tying lure making just like it then click on this video right here if you're interested in to know why I call the channel what I call it, click on this video right here. Otherwise, until the next time, I'll see you guys at the Soft Plastics.